The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been exploring the surface of the Moon since 2009, mapping and imaging the surface of the Moon like never before. It orbits about 50 to 200 kilometers above the Moon's surface, as there is no atmosphere to slow it down, meaning it can really see the surface in exquisite detail with its powerful camera, the LROC. Due to the Moon's close proximity to us, the amount of data it is able to send each day far surpasses missions like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, the Juno mission around Jupiter, and the New Horizons mission that passed Pluto. In fact, it can send back an astonishing 155 gigabytes per day, or 55 terabytes per year. So, in a similar vein to my Mars series, I want to explore the surface of our moon and explain the images you will be looking at. I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum, and in this video we will explore the tallest mountains found on the moon. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, unlike the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, has a special ability to be able to take photos from an angle as well as from a top-down perspective. This means we are able to view the mountains of the Moon as if from the cockpit of a plane, which gives us a better sense of height and scale. Although, our sense of scale is already seriously messed up, as on Earth we have visual clues to help us judge how high or far away something is. For instance, we can tell the background here must be tens of kilometers away because the atmosphere makes the mountains quite hazy. Also, we can see the town, some trees, all of which help us know roughly how big the object is that we are looking at. But on the moon, we don't have any of that. No trees, no atmosphere, no towns. Just looking at this image, how big would you say this mountain is? How wide is the foreground in this image? It would be fun to see your guesses in the comments. But as it happens, the foreground of this image is about 15 kilometers across. And the foreground mountain is nearly 7 kilometers tall. These two peaks at the back are a massive 200 kilometers away and roughly 4,500 meters tall. Surprisingly, these peaks aren't named like they would be if they were on Earth at that size. The best way to get a sense of scale for these images is to use the amazing tool NASA has released called QuickMap, where you can see the moon under various filters, including a topographical map. Here's the mountain in the foreground of the image, and here is the background peaks. You'll also notice that these peaks are found around the rim of a crater. Pretty much all of the mountains we will look at today can either be found on the rims or center of craters, including these ones found in the famous Copernicus Crater. When craters form, we all tend to think of the circle they create, but big craters often have uplift in the center. Surprisingly enough, this is not due to an effect like a water drop impacting a pool of water or elastic rebound, where the center shoots up again after impact. That only happens with material with elastic strength trying to return to its original shape. Rather, craters have uplift in the center due to the surface material attempting to revert to a gravitational equilibrium. Copernicus Crater can easily be seen on the surface of the Moon by an amateur telescope, and as a result, it's one of the Moon's most viewed features from the ground. These mountains in the center look impressive, but they only rise about 1,000 meters above the crater floor. Zoom in out a bit, and you can see how dwarfed they are by the surrounding crater walls, reaching 4,000 meters above the crater floor. Here's the crater from another angle, and one thing you'll notice is that the basin of this crater is lumpy but comparatively flat. This is because, after the massive impact that caused this 100 km wide crater, the floor was lava, which eventually solidified. Moving on to a new location on the Moon, we come to the Apennine Mountains, an impressive range of 3 to 5 km high mountains found at the rim of one of the biggest impact craters in the whole solar system. 
the Imbrium Basin, or Mare Imbrium. These mountains look interesting next to this Mare, or a solidified lava plain. And this Rille, which is kind of like a gorge found on the moon. But apart from being a very interesting view, there's something special about this place. It is in fact where the Apollo 15 mission landed in 1971, which means there is also a ground perspective to these mountains. Here is the lunar module with these same mountains in the background. And from here it looks like they are so close, but remember our perception of things is skewed. These actually rise about 5 kilometers high from the plane the camera is on higher than the Himalayan front above the Nepalese and Indian plains on Earth. Astronauts also investigated the relay using their lunar rover. This relay actually drops down 380 meters. Relays are a bit of a mystery as it isn't clear why they are there. One leading theory is that they are the exposed or collapsed magma tunnels under the surface of the moon back when it was more geologically active. From the perspective of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, the tracks left by the rover can still be seen today, as there is no wind on the moon to cover up the tracks with dust. So even though the Apollo mission happened about 40 years before this photo was taken, the remains can still be seen in pristine detail. It wouldn't be right to talk about some of the highest points on the moon without talking about the highest point. Sadly, it doesn't look too impressive as it has a really shallow gradient, only 3 degrees. It's near the biggest impact crater on the whole moon, the Aitken Basin, which likely formed 4 billion years ago. As you can see, this crater is huge and would have created a lot of ejecta. This ejecta piled up all around the crater, including what is now known as the highest point on the moon. The basin was likely caused by a low velocity impact with an object 200 kilometers in diameter, and it would have been at a sharp angle as the ejector was flung mainly in one direction. Interestingly, the lowest point on the moon is not so far away from the highest point. The lowest point found at the bottom of a crater within the basin is about minus 9,100 meters and the highest point is taller than Everest at 10,786 meters. Just a side note for those of you that are curious, these heights come from comparing the average radius of the moon with the elevation of that point. Are you interested in computer science? Then check out Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like a computer scientist. Instead of passively listening to lectures, you get to master concepts by solving fun and challenging problems, and Brilliant provides the tools and framework you need to tackle these challenges. Brilliant's thought-provoking content based around breaking up complexities into bite-size and understandable chunks will lead you from curiosity to mastery. So, what are you waiting for? Try Brilliant out for free today using the link brilliant.org forward slash astrum. Then, if you like what you see, the first 200 people that use that link will get 20% off the annual Brilliant Premium subscription. Well, thanks so much for watching. The moon, although monochrome, really is a treat, as it's the only other celestial body where humans have set foot, which means that there is still a ton to talk about. If you want to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon page. Donate $5 or more to have your name added to this list. All the best, and I'll see you next time.